You've probably heard this quote from Alan Kay, if you're serious about software, you should make your own hardware. But as a computer programmer, is it really possible to design your own hardware? If custom chips really do make for a better product, why doesn't your company do it already? One of the most well-known companies making their products with custom silicon is Apple. So what benefits do they get? Well, for their wearables, it makes a ton of sense to fit all the functionality needed into the fewest, smallest parts possible. There's not exactly much room in an earbud or a watch for anything unnecessary. And if you take a look at their bigger chips, now in use in their laptops, they're getting incredible graphics performance because they basically put a graphics card inside the main processor. They get control. So with all these advantages, why don't more companies make custom chips? Well, let's start by taking a look at the amount of money it traditionally takes to make a custom chip. The main cost factors of chip design are labor, IP, software licenses, and prototype costs. An in-house chip design team would cost tens of millions of US dollars. And even using an external design house would cost a minimum of three to four million dollars for a simple RISC-V prototype. Then another 10 million on top of that for software licenses. Once you're ready, a prototype chip could cost anywhere from tens of thousands to a few million dollars. But is it always true that you need a big team, fancy software, Steve Jobs legacy, and the latest and greatest in chip technology to make useful chips? Of course not. All you need is discipline, curiosity, and parents who made you feel like nothing was ever good enough, so you continuously aim for perfection as if that would solve anything. Sorry, I might be projecting. The good thing is, you can do better than useful as well. Don't let anyone bring you down, Your Excellency. Let's start off with the technology, or node, as we call it in the biz. TSMC, the world's biggest chip manufacturer's latest node, is going to be the most expensive, of course. But we only really need performance like that for the latest servers, laptops, and phones. In terms of chip manufactured, 70% are made using older, cheaper processes. Some industries like aerospace and automotive even have very good reasons to use these older, bigger processes. For example, they're more tried and tested, and they're more resilient to radiation. And if you're making cars, for example, there's a lot more room for chips than an earbud, so there's no need to go for the smallest process. Moving on to the software, for the most advanced chips, you do absolutely need to rent the expensive software from the big three EDA vendors. Yes, I know, capitalism sucks, but that's the world that we live in and even software has landlords. If you're working on less advanced designs, then you have more options. And more options means less monopoly pricing. Just as open source software started off small in operating systems, databases, internet, and mobile, but grew to be the standard. We're now seeing the use of open source chip design tools growing every year. Finally, there's the chip design team, which can range from tens to thousands of people working in very specialized roles, like design and verification through to tool chain management and final layout of the chip design files. Building a chip design team is getting harder and harder. The forecast is that another 100,000 people will be needed in the industry over the next 10 years. But what if it's possible to quickly train a team of existing programmers to design chips? Well, Chipflow software makes that possible, opening the door to custom chip design by reducing training time and taking advantage of open source tools. Want to see how your team could design a chip at a tenth of the normal cost? Let's take an example design and see how it's done. We'll take the automotive market and target an old, trusted, and cheap technology. In a car, everything talks on a network. So let's make a chip that fits in a door handle. It's got an input to detect when you're trying to open it, an output to drive a light, a RISC-V processor, and it connects to the car's network to transmit a message when the input is triggered. We've chosen a RISC-V processor because it's an open source standard. That means we don't have to pay a license to use it. And we can write software for it with free standard open source compilers. 
We can start with the template RISC-V processor design. This one's called Minerva. It's available with a permissive open source license, so you can use it for a commercial product. This is the top level design file where the CPU is created. The language you're seeing is called Amaran. It's a modern hardware description language used both for design and for writing up existing functional blocks. If it looks like Python, that's because it's essentially a Python library. We want an input and output, so we'll choose a functional block and add it here. The way this will work is that each input or output will get mapped to an address in memory. Here's the firmware that listens for a button press and sends a message to the car's network when that happens. The firmware can already make use of the button because the software has automatically created the memory map. These lines show the button being checked, and these will send a message. That's pretty much all we need for a basic example. So the next step is to simulate it. Everything's built into the familiar VS Code editor. So we can just press this button here, and the design starts running. We can watch various parts of the design change in this window, which is really useful for debugging if we run into problems. When the button is pressed, we can see the message is sent and the design stops, ready for us to step forwards or backwards in the simulation. Now that we've got something working, how do we manufacture it? The Chipflow platform takes care of a lot of the underlying details, so your team can focus on the development of the functional system. The chip design gets built on the Chipflow platform, and after it's done, we can view the results here. Once the design is finished, you can submit it to be manufactured with one of our partners for free. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, n no, no. I, I don't have the money. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, great. Perfect. Guys, it will not be free. Chipflow is free to use for open source projects and is very competitive for industry use. If you want to evaluate the platform, go to chipflow.io and sign up. In our simple demonstration, everything went well. But what if there's a problem? Our next video will show off some of the awesome debugging tools we've built right into VS Code. Okay, bye. See you in the next Chipflow video.